All right, you got what you wanted. Guys, after numerous requests, finally Pure Passage offers Hajj. Experience the divine journey of Hajj, the most significant act of worship in Islam, performed on behalf of your loved ones by Pure Passage. Hajj is not only a spiritual obligation for every Muslim, but also a symbol of unity, peace and submission to Allah's will. Our devoted team of experienced sheikhs and students of knowledge will take on this holy pilgrimage on behalf of your family members who are unable to undertake this once-in-a-lifetime journey. Our exclusive Hajj package includes the performance of the Hajj rituals, a detailed video report of the journey and a commemorative certificate marking the completion of this spiritual obligation. Don't miss out on this unique opportunity. Let our team take on this journey for you while honoring their legacy and providing you with peace of mind. Join us in the spiritual journey and leave a legacy that will last for eternity. Be'ith me love. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, you really wanted me to react to Sneeko that recently reverted to Islam. In this video, he streams on Rumble and explains why he converted to Islam. So if this is the first time for you seeing my face, I recently converted to Islam myself. It has been roughly five weeks ago. However, two years ago, I opened up the Quran and read the whole book. After that, I started reading Hadith, started learning about Islam and already started practicing, going to the mosque, doing the daily prayers, the evolution, etc, etc. So therefore, officially, I'm a recent convert myself. I come from an Orthodox Christian background. However, I have been studying Islam for quite some time now. This is why I'm very interested, of course, when people find Islam as well. Today, we're going to check out Sneeko's stories on why Islam makes sense to him. With no further ado, guys, let's have a look. But I just wanted to, I was just pointing out why I have always, why I resonate with Islam, why it makes sense for me, because I don't like the idea that you worship a man. I believe that Jesus Christ was a prophet and I believe that Jesus Christ was real, but I don't think that you should have him bloody as hell on a cross and like you, you pray to him. It, it's, it's weird, it doesn't make sense to me to pray to a man. I don't want to submit to a man. I would say that this is the strongest point made right there because if you submit yourself to a man, you're already limiting yourself because what does it mean? What does it entail? If you submit yourself to a man, you are a man yourself and you know clearly that you are not transcendent. So now you're attributing certain transcendental factors onto a human being made out of flesh. Of course, I understand. The Christians will say that Jesus was fully man and fully God at the same time. But this is, of course, a contradiction. And naturally, Sneeko here saw that as well. And moreover, truly, just because Christianity is the biggest world religion as for right now, does not make it right by default. It is very similar to certain racially inspired religions, such as the Hebrew Israelites or even the nation of Israel. Islam. If you look into those doctrines, you will see that they are worshipping a man as well. Their God is a black man. And Christianity is not much different because their God is a white man. But I say, of course, that anything that you can confine to your imagination, anything that you can wrap your head around fully, such as a man, cannot be God because God is transcendent of all that. He is the creator of the universe. After after all, do you really believe the God that created human beings was a human himself? The only person that we should sense. submit to and that we should pray to should be the one creator of the universe, which is Allah. Exactly right. He created the universe and we love him for it. Perfect. That Simple. really makes the most sense to me. Yes. I don't want to say like Jesus is also God and he's also a man and there's the Holy Spirit and Christ is God because he rose. So he's a man. Is God. It doesn't. What? It doesn't make sense. Muhammad, what I like about... Islam and why 
it's it's around exactly right it is absolutely confusing and therefore you do not know what to submit to islam the translation of the word islam is submission to god but how do you do that with a trinitarian god this was truly my question to my christian fellow peers back in the day i asked them guys how do we even do this how do we submit ourselves to god how do we pray to god was my honest question if we have three personas if we have the holy spirit and and we have the Father, and we have the Son, who do I pray to? And they have certain Jesus prayers, then they have a Father prayer, sometimes they invoke the Holy Spirit, but what does it mean? There is no crystal clear focus, very similar to the saying of Confucius, the man who chases two rabbits catches neither. And this is wisdom that you can apply to life. If you are focused on two different things, you're not focused whatsoever. You cannot be. You can only focus on one thing 100% at the time. And the same should, of course, apply to the most high, the most important thing in life for us, worshiping God for all religious people. So how do I worship God? How do I submit myself to God? If my mind is scattered onto three pieces of God, God. In Islam, you have one God and you submit your will to him. To draw Muhammad, it's, 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 and they don't even, not just draw Muhammad, but in Islam, you're not even supposed to draw Jesus Christ. No, nobody. I think a lot of Muslims find it disrespectful that Christians are put Jesus everywhere, bloody as hell on all these crosses, sure. because we shouldn't. And that's why I, I didn't really resonate with Christianity a lot growing up, because it's like, they're all the images that they put of God. It doesn't make sense to me. We can't, we are not capable of visualizing what the creator of the universe looks like. Exactly. What he's doing. Why is he in a cloud chilling with the beard? Why is he white? Why is God a dude? It doesn't make any sense. So there's no point in us even conceptualizing it because we can never have the capability to. Absolutely right. Very important point here. We can't stress this enough. Think about this universe, even scientifically speaking. You cannot understand the universe. You have absolutely no idea what dark matter is. We don't truly understand atoms, quantum physics, etc., etc. We have no idea what this even is. People try to make sense out of it. What is this? Maybe it's a simulation. Maybe it's a dream. People don't even understand the creation. But now you're going to tell me that you understand the creator how it doesn't make sense we haven't fully explored this physical realm and not even the metaphysical realm behind it but now you're going to tell me that you know that god and i have to laugh here that god is a human being made out of flesh just like us i like the fact that you pray five times a day in islam yes that's you're going to be more grounded there they take prayer more seriously than any other religion sure and I like the fact that they separate masculinity and Moreover, with this schedule, you actually achieve something. Think about it, man. If you follow a certain sport, no matter what it is, let's say bodybuilding. With bodybuilding, you have to work out five times per week, for example, and you have to eat six meals per day, the same meals every single day. Then you need a schedule for your supplementation and what not. You need everything meticulously planned. And now we're talking not about a sport, but we're talking about the after life and you're gonna tell me now I can pray as I want to hm, it's enough before going to bed one little prayer finished of course not if you want to come to success by the way this is the translation of the Adam come to prayer come to success if you truly want to come to success you need a schedule you need a plan of course for your spirituality I like the fact that they separate masculinity and femininity how important that is yeah. it fixes a lot of L? Bro, a lot of L's in the chat right now. Every, people are getting upset. That's the kufar. It's just, it, it's just food for thought. <laughs> I have no, I don't, I still have the Bible right here. I still have the Bible right here. I still read the Bible. But It's fine, you don't need to cater to them. <laughs> yeah, I, I did convert. I did convert. All right, guys, this is already it for today's video. Unfortunately, he cut it off there after receiving many L's in the chat. Who cares? Do not cater to them, but preach the truth, of course. And I believe that he made very, very strong points. First and foremost, the creator that we cannot imagine, that we cannot depict, that our imagination is way too limited in order to put him in a box. That is the beauty of God, ultimately, that we cannot put him in a box. Christianity tries to do that, of course, by saying he is the father. 
and the Son and the Holy Spirit. But let's just stick with the Father for now, imagining God being a male, a father figure. I do understand the compelling aspect of that. I do understand that many people want a sky daddy, so to speak. But this is very limited, of course. This is what makes us human, this duality of male and female. God is a singularity. God is one. Therefore, why would he have gender? Those are the attributes of flesh beings that need to reproduce. God does not need to reproduce. God is one and he is eternal. He doesn't need to make more gods because he is one. It is that simple and therefore attributing a gender to God is absolutely blasphemous, of course. You're limiting God to such an extent that you are creating him in your image. Christians always say God created us in his image. I would say it's the exact opposite. You are creating God in your image image by assuming that he has a gender, that he is a male ultimately. He is the father and the son, both male figures. It is very, very ironical, of course, that people will point the finger and say that Islam is so misogynistic for attributing gender roles to people, but you're attributing gender roles to God. All right, guys, enough ranting. This is it for today's video. If you liked it, leave it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And if you want to support this channel via Patreon, for example, all the links are in the description box below. Click the links. Thank you so much for your ongoing support, guys. And as always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.